Hey guys, Darkovica here, and today is going to be a tutorial day with Tyranno Builder Visual Novel Studio. First things first, I wanted to have an introduction on what visual novels are. And that's actually kind of difficult to define because visual novels are currently a sort of massless genre of video gaming. And what I mean by that is they don't really have a set of rules. There isn't a specific amount of gameplay required for it to be a visual novel. Pretty much all a visual novel requires is a story and text and really at least one or two options that change the path. A visual novel should not be mistaken with a book. <laughs> it is not meant to be a book. It's not supposed to take place of a book. It has images. It's supposed to be a game. And I think people tend to forget that. Visual novels are games. And gameplay does not necessarily have to be solving puzzles. It does not have to be shooting someone. It doesn't even have to be a fight. Gameplay can also be the butterfly effect. Uh, the most recently successful, you know, example of the butterfly effect is Until Dawn. Some people would say it's a story-driven game, but that's not necessarily true because the story is not ever immutable. It is constantly being changed by gameplay, us making choices, us affecting the game, us constantly being afraid of how we're affecting the game. That is gameplay, and that is what make, can make or break a visual novel. If you're looking for examples, I would suggest looking into the company Hanako Games. They have fantastic games with amazing gameplay, loads of options, loads of different qualities and art styles and just different types of stories and it's all over the board and they're a fantastic company for visual novels. So as this is an introduction, we're basically going to talk about how to set up your project and we're going to talk about the interface for Tyranno Builder Visual Novel. I do not believe I mentioned this, but this engine is actually very cheap. It's only $15 on Steam and it does go on sale every so often. Uh, if you take into account that RPG Maker is about $70, that is a great price. So first things first, when you open up Tyranno Builder, this is the window you see with your current projects. And uh, it's very simple to create a new one. You just click the new project button. You want to go ahead and name your project. And uh, most of the time in the video game industry, there has to be some kind of naming pattern. You must name all of your things the same. I tend to name my stuff with capital letters uh, to separate words and then an underscore to separate digits. So this is tutorial project 01. This is the first tutorial project. So this is how I tend to name my stuff. I am a programmer by the way. Uh, right, so we have two options here. A visual novel and a sound novel. And those are two very different types of games. I'm not going to dig too deep into sound novel, but what you should know is that the most important aspect of a sound novel is not the images. You can put anything in the background, but the text will cover it. What is most important in a sound novel, if you couldn't guess, is the sound. So you would want to get voice acting, you would want to get programmers, you would want to make sure that the whole thing is seamless and flawless. It's very different from a visual novel, which relies quite heavily on, you guessed it, visuals. Alright, let's go ahead and move on. We have three options here, actually technically four options. We have landscape 960 by 640. This is one that I tend to go with, mostly because of an option I will show you. Uh, landscape 640 by 480, that is teeny tiny. Uh, that's good for like iPads though. And portrait, which is 640 by 960, and that is very good for mobile devices, which Believe it or not, this engine has functionality for it. It's one of the most amazing parts of this engine is how easy it is to actually make a game. We'll get to that. You could also put in your custom size. So if you wanted 1600 by 900, uh, if you wanted 1200 by 900, if you wanted 1280 by 720, whatever, it's totally there. It's an option. I'm going to go with the default next. And uh, here on the last page, we can set it up so that it doesn't have a title screen or it doesn't have a menu button, which is not what I'm going to do. So we're just going to go ahead and hit create new project. All right, you are immediately greeted with loads of colors and some very confusing looking icons. 
Uh, this is, I'm just going to explain functionality, so let's go ahead and dive in. First things first, oh, excuse me. On the left side of the page, you have components, and these components are what's going to make your game. Some of these are very difficult to use and will require entire tutorials just by themselves. I'm looking at the scripting section down here, but the most important ones are definitely, I mean, really they all are important, but you're going to use the components from the story section over and you're going to continuously come back here. Your first option is a text option. And this component is extremely important because this basically drives your game. This is where your conversations are held. You have something here that says hello on the next line. It says this is a new project. This is a new game project. This is super important. There is a reason that it is like this. If I were to play from here, let's go ahead and do that. Right click on top of any node at all within the game scene and you can preview from here. It's another fantastic functionality. I've just skipped the entire menu. I've skipped opening up the scene and I've gone straight to the text. As you can see, the text has stopped at hello. But that's not the only text within the text box. If I click or press any button, it shows the next text and actually erases the previous text. This is built-in functionality for Tyranno Builder. It reads a new line as delete the last text and show this text instead. Now say I wanted someone to be speaking while this was happening. This is very important. You put a pound sign and their name. So let's go ahead and put my name. So now I have pound or hashtag for those of you who don't remember that it was called pound. Pound Monica. All right, let's go ahead and preview from here. Now, as you can see, my name is in bold, and it's actually a lot higher up than the rest of the text. That will actually stay there until I tell it to go away, and I can tell it to go away. Let's do this over here. I could put a blank pound line, and that's going to go ahead and tell it no one's speaking now. So here's my name for hello, and then my name goes away, because I told it that basically no one is speaking now. Okay, so let's go ahead and save and there's a bit of a bug at least right now as of October 7th 2015 where uh, sometimes it doesn't save so I tend to automatically save a couple of times uh, let's go ahead and keep going we have page break and insofar as I can understand page break it basically removes all elements in case you forgot any so you stick a page break at the beginning of every scene and it will delete any clickable areas or images that you've plopped down on the scene a branching button. This will require an entire video all of its own, but branching buttons are what creates the gameplay. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop these down. We're going to say yes. We're going to say no. Basically, these guys are going to automatically default to 0, zero which is the left corner of the screen, which we don't want. We're going to chunk yes over there and they're probably nowhere near each other but let's go ahead oh if you can see this play button right here this will allow you to preview the scene I would not suggest using this search scene uh, I think it's still broken that kind of freezes the engine it's still in um, pr process of being worked on definitely keep posting bug reports. They're very good at responding to bug reports. They're very good at looking at them and doing updates so long as they receive bug reports. All right, so if I go ahead and play the scene, it says, hello, this is a new game project, and now I have two buttons. They are a little far apart from each other, but that's because I spaced them that way. Um, I can click these, but they're not going to do anything right now. That is a whole other, <laughs> as a whole other cookie. We will get to that. Right, so this positioning tool for buttons is kind of nice and one of the really cool things about this uh, engine. And then you can go ahead and just make it perfect with the X position and the Y position over here. Same thing right here. You can see my X positions are completely different. That's why they're not on top of each other. So if I were to change this to 418, now they're probably going to be perfect. Well, okay, they're perfect in so far as these two are lined up by the left corner so I'd have to perfect it even more. Alright let's continue. 
Labels, I'm also going to have to explain in the video with branching buttons. Just know labels are basically how branching is going to help you change or basically make decisions. It's You would have this branching button go to that label that I just created. Don't worry if that didn't make any sense. There will be an entire video on that. Jump allows you to jump between scenes. So if I wanted to go back to the main menu, I could. This is just going to automatically jump to the title screen. Next we have characters. These are character components and basically this will allow us to have characters join the scene. Don't believe, no, I don't have any characters set up right now. We'll get to that. So I'm going to leave that blank for now. We have join scene which will have a character enter the scene. Exit scene which will remove the character from the scene and change expression which will modify your character. We'll get to that. Images, we have change background. If I had extra backgrounds, I could, oh, I do. So here I can change from this background to this background, and it'll work. Here we can show an image, which is not the same as the background. It's just an image on top of this background. We can remove the image. We can make a clickable area. So if I wanted to create, oh, we don't have any uh, images set up in here right now. So we're just going to ignore this for now. If you wanted to create your own button and not use their built-in branching buttons, you absolutely could. And you'd have to drop a clickable area on top of it, and that would allow them to be able to click on it. It would function just like a button. You could tell it to do whatever you wanted it to. An image button is basically exactly what I said if you wanted to actually create your own image button. Effect, show message window, as you can see right here, a show message window literally just shows the message window. If I try to play this without it, there is no message window. It is gone. So you got to make sure that you are always showing your message window. In between scenes, the message window will not disappear, but because this game is coming from the main menu and the main menu has the message button or the message window hidden, you absolutely must make sure that your very first opening scene has this uh, component. Hide message window in case you want seamless transitions from one scene to the other. If I do this, it will go ahead and show some text. This is a new game project and now it has hidden the message window. It has shown my buttons. Now <laughs> it has teleported us back to the main screen and it has not removed my buttons. That would be why we would need a page break. Right there. Alright. Text speed, you can change the text speed. Show background, that's if you needed to hide the background at all. Uh, change font style, you can change the font style. Reset font style to put it back to its default. Wait, this will force the game to ignore player input. This is useful for voice acting, if you want voice acting. You can force the player to wait until the end of the voice acting. And quake is exactly what it sounds like. It is a quake, it will shake the screen like that. Your media section of components, play music, that's literally what it is. It is loopable, so if I were to chuck this in here, you can have it loop, and you can have smartphone browser compatibility. Check if preceded by a movie or background transition. So basically this is just saying if the transition has just happened, uh, check this so that the smartphone does not freak out. I hope my mic is not picking that up. My ears just started, my Headphones just started making a noise. Hope that's not actually happening. All right, stop music will, of course, stop the music. Play sound effect, stop sound effect, movie. This is great for opening intros, and movies can be made skippable. So if you have an opening cutscene that you want them to be able to skip because you don't want them to have to watch a five minute video every single time they open up your game, very, very useful. We are going to ignore the scripting nodes for right now because those are monsters in and of themselves. But if you are prepared to look at their API, I would suggest focusing on TyrannoScript. JavaScript does not, I mean, I, the iScript node is basically if you want to use JavaScript, which the JavaScript functionality within Tyranno Builder is kind of finicky, to say the least. It does not always work and not all of its components are readily available to you, plus var does not work. You actually still have to use their variable system in TyrannoScript. Also, I love the description of the TyrannoScript node. It's in Japanese. Like I said, it's still being worked on. 
Right, so those are all of the components over here. Next is the character screen. You know what? We're going to do characters in a whole other video. Basically, we've talked about the components. We've talked about how to make a game. That was pretty much all that I wanted to get done for this video, was talk about components and talk about how to make a game, or how to rather how to start a new project. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and please, I will be doing more tutorials. So if you are worried about buttons, or you are worried about movies, or you're worried about backgrounds, don't worry, we're going to have loads of those. I will get into characters in the next video. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!